Hi and welcome everyone to Ruin Hammers Weekly NRL Round Review. Uh, this week we're going to take a quick look at the results from Round 23. Before we get started, I invite you all to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel to show your support for the content we create. Subscribing to the channel puts you in the draw to win some exclusive Ruin Hammer merch. So click that subscribe button now. Rob, Round 23, mate, let's jump in and have a look. Yeah, absolutely. Round 23 of the NRL got underway on Thursday night. That was with the Roosters taking on Manly at the SCG. Both teams fighting for their season. And it was the Roosters 26. Tupo with a double. Manu, Smith and Suali'i tries. And Suali'i three from five. The Seagulls 16. Schuster, Parker and Kula tries. Garrick two from four. The Roosters, they had Nathan Brown sent off, but still managed to send the Seagulls packing with a 26 to 16 win at the SCG on Thursday night. And it was Brown who was marched to the 63rd minute for a high shot on Ben Trevojevic. But the Roosters scored a try in his absence. And uh, they put the finishing touches on a win that keeps their slim finals hopes alive. And the sorry, Rabbitohs, uh, the, sorry, the Sea Eagles, lost uh, Tofo Sipley to the Sinbin midway through the second half before Brown was given his marching orders by referee Ashley Klein in the 61st minute. Um, and the Roosters at that point were leading 22 to 2. Uh, uh, fittingly, at the Sydney Cricket Round, 22 for two. Two. <laughs> yeah. And a total of 13 penalties were blown in that first half. Both sides struggled for discipline. And Jared Weir Hargraves, he set the tone for the Roosters with 11 runs for 108 metres in the opening 40 minutes. Roosters skipper James Tedesco had 16 runs for 161 metres and broke seven tackles in a dominant display. Yeah. Um, that send-off was uh, pretty pretty rocking um, by Nathan Brown. He's got a bit of that in his game, a bit of shit like that in his game. Uh, I think he copped a one-match ban as well uh, at the judiciary. Uh, mate, Friday night footy kicked off on the Gold Coast with the Warriors in town to take on the Titans at Seabus mm -hmm. Super Stadium. We were at this game. Uh, fantastic game of footy. It was the Great. Warriors 28. Uh, Sean Johnson to uh, Jackson Ford, Torhu Harris, Dallin Wateni, Zelezniak tries. Johnson four from five goals over the Titans 18. David Fafida, Stimson and Campbell tries. Uh, Tanner Boyd two from two, Campbell one from one. Mate, the, the Warriors, they continued on their charge towards the finals after o overcoming a very tenacious 12-man Titans side, 28-18 uh, on Friday night. The Titans were spirited in their defeat after uh, prop Mo Fodawaka was sent off early. Mm. Um, and then a long-range Jaden Campbell try bring the game down to the wire until the Warriors rallied late to secure a scrappy victory. Mate, no points scored in the opening 20 minutes of the clash, but there was plenty of drama, uh, as we said. Titans forward Chris Randall, he was placed on report for a high tackle. Uh, Fodder Waker was sent off for a similar tackle on Chance Nickel Klukster. That activated the 18th man for the Warriors, Tainu Apiki coming on. And then Warriors back rower, Murata Nilakore, who does have a big uh, target on his back when it comes to the referee. He was sent to the sin bin again, um, with uh, all three of those incidents occurring within 10 minutes of play. Uh, mate, the wind keeps the Warriors slim. Uh, sorry, the wind keeps the Warriors in the top four. Um, and the Titans now languishing in 13. As always, we'll be live 7.30 p.m. Uh, on Thursday night right here on our YouTube channel to review this game in detail. We certainly will. And the second of your Friday night games was the first place Panthers at home to the fourth place Storm. It was a Panthers 26. Toto with a double. Luai and Crichton tries. Cleary five from six. Over the Storm, six. Tottenham appear with the try. Meany one from two. The Panthers cruise to a comfortable 26-6 victory over the Storm at Blue Bet Stadium on Friday night. The defending champs are closing in on another minor premiership after shutting out the Melbourne heavyweights, holding their place in the top of the competition ladder and making it eight straight at home. Very formidable. Losing yeah. Jerome Hughes with an ankle injury, though, and Xavier Coates with a hip injury throughout the week. It didn't help Melbourne's cause at all. But 11 errors and 41 missed tackles crueled any chances they had of causing an upset in the west of Sydney. The Panthers have now won five of their past seven games against the Storm. Uh, that was since losing the 2020 Grand Final. And Panthers winger Brian Toto has now scored 14 tries in his past 10 games at Bluebet Stadium. Yeah, those 41 missed tackles would have uh, caused Craig, Craig Bellamy to have a conniption, I think. Blood, uh, blood pressure <laughs> through the roof, I reckon. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Super Saturday, mate. Super Saturday kicked off in the tropics of North Queensland with the Cowboys at home against the Broncos. A rare Saturday afternoon game in Townsville. A rare Saturday game for the Broncos. 
Um, but they ran out winners. Uh, the Broncos, 30. Arthurs, Carrigan, Mam, Walsh, Cobo, Tries, Stags, five from six goals. Over the Cowboys, 14. Uh, Felt, two. Lukey, Tries, Townsend, 40, uh, one from four goals. And both teams without their first-choice kickers. Holmes uh, with his four-game suspension. And uh, Adam Reynolds are with, uh, withdrawn through injury for this game. Uh, but the Broncos, mate, they continue continue to match motors with Penrith at the top of the table uh, with this win over the Cowboys at uh, Queensland Country Bank Stadium. Jock Madden doing a fine job deputising for Adam Reynolds. Ezra Mam again electric. The Broncos racked up their 16th win of the season to maintain a share of the competition lead. Uh, Pat Carrigan, he was immense for the Broncos with a try. Two weeks in a row, isn't it, for Carrigan? Not having a try. Yeah, and then goes, easy. <laughs> yeah, two weeks in a row. Uh, 154 run metres, three tackle breaks and 40 tackles. Uh, and he's, in his first game since round 16, veteran Cowboys fly Kyle Felt ran for 206 metres and scored a double. Uh, for the Broncos, though, Payne House led the way up front for Brisbane with 207 run metres and 41 tackles. Jeez, Kyle Felt should have had a third. He was dead set. He passed when he when he ended up over mm. the try line there as well. Yeah. And also, I must note, it was great to see the Cowboys wearing their white jersey and forcing the Broncos to wear their uh, darker <laughs> coloured strip um, in, a, in the Townsville heat. So it's not just us that they uh, they do it to. So. I did see the hose out near the field as well, so I, they probably watered the field down as well. Bet that was you, Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, yeah. So second game of Super Saturday continued, and there was a double header at Optus Stadium in Perth. Um, the first of the double headers was the Dolphins up against the Knights, and it was the Knights 30. Ponga, Man, Hastings, Crossland, and Mazu tries. Ponga five from five over the Dolphins 28. Asako with three, Tefare and Lemuelu tries. Asako two from four, and O'Sullivan two from two. Three tries in the final 27 minutes lifted Newcastle to victory after they had trailed the Dolphins 22-12 to 12, um, with half an hour to play. And skipper Pat Caelan Ponga at the heart of the, of the revival, which leaves the Knights undefeated in their past five games. Mm. Ponga scored the opening four-pointer of the game off a long-range um, support run and went um, on to set up his side's final two tries with clutch plays, along with clocking up 179 run metres from just 10 carries. And earlier, it looked like a golden 10-minute uh, period from Jermaine Asako would set the Dolphins up for victory. And while they fought very hard to the end, ultimately, they couldn't match it with the class of the Knights um, when the game did sit in the balance. Uh, with Lachlan Fitzgibbon in the sin bin for his hip drop, Asako scored a hat-trick um, in the space of eight minutes to get the Dolphins to a 14-6 advantage. But the Knights fought hard and a must-needed uh, win despite having only 47% of the ball and committing 11 errors to the Dolphins' seven. So the Dolphins have now won only one of their past six games played outside Queensland this season. Uh, it's an interesting game. Um, and some credit has to be given to Adam O'Brien here now too, because, uh, you know, that that experiment to have Kalen Ponga play in the halves at the beginning of the year, uh, Adam O'Brien was very... Uh, he went along with that decision, but uh, which is strange because he's the head coach. You'd think that he makes the decisions mm. on how the team is picked, but he was dead set against it. He said he wanted Kalen at fullback, and since Pong has gone back to fullback, he's been outstanding mm. uh, for the Knights. A absolutely outstanding. So, uh, and I think they've now snuck, snuck into the eight because um, of that odd point that they've got on that, their from the points table yeah, that from the draw with Manly earlier in the year. Um, yeah, they're going good. I think they. Uh, they they got a relatively easier run than a couple of other sides heading home too, so that they could hold that spot in the eight, which would be uh, great for it. the yeah, which would be great yeah. for the Knights. Uh, the the second of the double uh, the Perth doubleheader game saw the Rabbits taking on the Sharks, and everyone thought this was going to be a fait accompli that the Rabbits would just outmuscle the Sharks and run away with it. But there was the Sharks twenty six, uh, Tricky Trindle two, Herodi Katoa tries. Uh, Hines, five, for five from five goals over the Rabbits, 16. Johnston, Ilias, and Tass tries. Mitchell, two from three goals. Um, mate, Nico Hines returned to his best as the Sharks held off a late Rabbitohs comeback to end a three-match losing streak in Perth on Saturday night. Cronulla had conceded 102 points in their three losses and they'd failed to score in last weekend's 28-0 loss to Penrith, but they held South scoreless for 64 minutes mm -hmm. uh, before finishing 26-16 winners. The Sharks raced to a 24-0 lead as Hines had a hand in three of his side's four tries and made 16 runs in that first receiver role as Cronulla kept their top four hopes alive. Um, 
Sharks captain Wade Graves celebrated his 250th game for the club with a win and ran 115 metres with the ball. Uh, the Rabbits, one of the season's favourites early on uh, in the year, are now under some enormous pressure to make the top eight with some tough matchups ahead in the next few rounds. Yeah, it's funny. Everyone's just assuming. Everyone's just assuming the Rabbitohs are going to come good, but they're not yeah. coming good. That no. all they've done in the last probably about six weeks is they beat us in that in the wet, and they beat the Tigers. Yeah. And that they they looked likely, but they just couldn't hold on to the ball. Their their handling was atrocious in that second half. And um, yeah, you get what you deserve. It's it's defense yeah. that's really killing them at the moment. The the Rabbitohs, mm. the like they've they, they've got points in them, but defensively they're mm. just awful at the moment. So. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And moving on to Sunday footy, that kicked off at Combank Stadium. That was the Eels hosting the Dragons. Is the Eels 26, Cartwright with a double, Miller, Stephen, Russell and Parlo tries, and Moses three from five over the Dragons 20. Ravalawa four tries, and Lomax two goals. And the Parramatta Eels, they kept their finals hopes alive after overcoming the St. George Lord Dragons 26 to 20 in what was an entertaining and intensely fought match. Um, played in front of a vocal crowd at Combank Stadium. The Eels scored three straight tries to close out the second half and claimed the result in what was a must-win game for them to keep them in touch with the eight. While Parramatta started well, um, scoring two tries in the opening 11 minutes of the match, the Dragons came roaring back into it with uh, blockbusting winger Michaeli Ravalawa, um, overcoming a poor start to cross for a first-half hat-trick, and that was his fourth hat-trick in his career. And his tries saw the visitors go into the break with a 16-10 lead. And things looked ominous for the Eels when Ravalawa scored his fourth of the game to uh, start the second half. However, errors and some determined last-ditch Parramatta uh, defence hand handed the ball and the opportunity back to the desperate Eels. And they made no mistake, scoring three unanswered tries to get the result and keep their slim uh, finals hopes alive. And the match... Uh, was the Eels 5-8, Dylan Brown's first uh, following a seven-match suspension uh, following uh, NRL and club sanctions. Yeah, uh, it was a, an interesting game. It was an entertaining game. And the Dragons were a little bit unlucky because they had that disallowed try um, in that second half too. I think it was Jacob Little. Um, yeah, the strip the, from Guffo. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, with the, that strip. So, yeah, I think they were a little bit hard done by. Um but, uh, yeah, Eels still slim chance of making the eight. Uh, the final game around 23, 23 was played at GIO Stadium with the uh, Canberra Raiders at home against the visiting West Tigers. And it was a Raiders 22. Sebastian Chris 2, Young Timico tries, Fogarty 3 from 4 goals over the Tigers 18. Uh, Charlie Staines, Nofaluma and Brooks tries, Coruscant 3 from 3 goals. Mm. Um and like I said, the Raiders, they overcame a spirited West Tigers outfit to keep their top four hopes alive with a thrilling 22-18 victory at GIO Stadium on Sunday. Uh, the Tigers, mate, they had one play to steal the lead after an 80th-minute Jack White and tri-saver was ruled high. But in typical Raiders fashion, the home side dug deep and saved faith in front of their home fans. Uh, the victory lifts Canberra into fifth place on the place on the ladder, but with games against the Storm, Bulldogs, Broncos, and Sharks to come, yeah. Ricky's side will need to address the errors and penalties, which almost cost them a third straight loss. Uh, having completed just four from 12 sets, 20 minutes into the match, the Raiders spoiled several opportunities to open the scoring, while the Tigers also struggled to capitalise on some early field possession. Uh, West Tigers winger Dave Nofaluma, he became the first player to score 100 tries for the joint venture club in the 56th minute of the match. And aside from the joint venture record, no player had ever scored 100 tries for either the Balmain Tigers or West Magpies either. So it makes that achievement even more impressive. So congratulations to Noffa. Uh, he does sit on 104 tries, mate, because he did have that uh, period at the Melbourne Storm last year Melbourne as a lone Storm. player where he yes. scored four tries. Um, but yeah, uh, 100 tries, first player to score 100 tries for the joint venture. Yeah, great record. Congratulations to an offer on that achievement. And the Bulldogs say enjoyed the buy. Um, enjoyed being the key word there, I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so after 23 rounds, the NRL ladder is taking shape like this. So the Panthers and the Broncos, they remain um, tied at the top of the competition table on 36 points, with the Warriors on third on 32 points. And despite going down to Penrith, the Storm remain on fourth on the ladder on 30 points. And the Raiders join the Storm on 30 competition points and remain in fifth courtesy of a negative points differential. 
The Sharks' victory over the Rabbits sees the Sharks move into sixth on 28 points and the Knights moving into seventh on 27 points. And the Rabbitohs, they round out the top eight on 26 points. Then the Eels, Cowboys are in ninth and 10th. Both of them also on 26 points, but outside the eight on points differential. Manly in 11th, they're on 25, with the Roosters in 12th on 24, and still with a slim chance of playing finals footy. The mm. remaining teams, the Titans and Dolphins on 22, Bulldogs on 20, Dragons on 16, and Tigers on 12. They will all miss finals footy for season 2023. Yep, they could start making their plans to visit the Bali in uh, September, mate. Uh, okay, don't forget this week's live show will be on Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, 9.30 p.m. New Zealand Standard Time, where we will review the Warriors' victory over the Titans. We'll also be talking about the uh, pre-game and post-game functions uh, that we attended yes. that were put on by the Warriors. Um, uh, and we'll also preview um, the all-important Mike Doreen Cup uh, which is played in Hamilton. Is it Hamilton this week? It uh, is Hamilton, Waikato yeah. Stadium. That time of Waikato year, Stadium. there's some yep. important silverware up for grabs. So Absolutely. So yeah, we'll, we will preview this. Yeah. Uh, and please, uh, as we said at the beginning of the, this uh, video, if you're a fan of our content, please make sure you like and subscribe to your YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the stuff that we do. Yeah, other ways that you can support us is to subscribe to our Patreon program. Uh, the links will be in this video description or head to our Red Bubble store. Grab yourself some exclusive Ruin Hammer merchandise. We've got plenty of designs honouring past legends of our club, current stars, as well as some great novelty prints, reliving some memorable moments. The link to that store also be in the description below. Well, that is it for this video, and we will see you all on Thursday night. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.